Well, hello, this is Peter Combs from bitemout.com, bitemoutlive.com, and P.O. Combs Asian Art in Gloucester, Massachusetts. And today is not Friday. If you're looking around saying, what's this video doing here today? It is not Friday. It is Thursday. I'm doing it a day early this week because tomorrow I have uh, uh, the first of some uh, things to, uh, medical things to do. And uh, from what I've been told, um, uh, I'm probably going to be on my back for a day or two afterwards. So uh, I won't be able to do the video tomorrow from what I've been told. So at any rate, I wanted to do it today because I had some stuff to talk about and uh, I wanted to uh, 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 just you know get it out of the way, get it ready for everybody and there's plenty to talk about. One of the things I wanted to mention was last week I shared a painting um, of, of, of a watercolor of, of the rabbits uh, that is in my own collection. I thought folks would be sort of interested to see, you know, everybody's always interested in what other people collect and I thought you might enjoy seeing that and, and the response seemed pretty positive. Uh, uh, people enjoyed it. I uh, actually got an email from a couple people wanting to know if I wanted to sell it. I don't, but thank you. Uh, one of the offers was uh, pretty astounding. And, uh, um, but, you know, uh, not, not right now. <laughs> any rate, um, uh, one of the things I wanted to mention was uh, uh, another painting that I've had that I've had for very many years, thirty something years, is this. It's it's a late Ming Dynasty uh, work on silk that I bought uh, very interestingly at an auction that was held at a legendary little auction hall here in the North Shore of Boston. Now, those of you that are familiar with this area that have been in the business for any length of time, back in the '90s or before, will know what I'm talking about. Ipswich, Massachusetts. There was a, there was sort of a legendary little VFW hall there, um, where it was just sort of one of these ideal places to run auctions. Had a big open floor, easy loading, huge parking lot, and run by a great bunch of veterans. And they were always happy to help out. They had a stage, um, um, and, and and the the auction hall itself, which was quite large, it was very large. Uh, uh, would seat hundreds of people, um, had a bar on the back of it. So dealers would come in and um, they'd preview, they'd go around, then they could go sit in the bar, they could order drinks. And it was a very big pair of double wide double doors that opened right up into the auction hall. And guys would sit in the back in the bar and bid, they'd send out for pizzas. Um, and the only phone in the building back and then, the only phone in the building to accept bids through was a pay phone near the bar in a little side room off the bar. So if somebody was going to bid by phone, we'd have somebody run back there with a credit card and ring him up and then make sure that he could see us on the stage or in, in the front of the hall uh, because the it was quite a distance and they have to clear a path and have runners down there make sure nobody was blocking him while he was on the phone with somebody. It was sort of telegraphed the bid up to us and uh, everybody did it this way. And uh, many of the great auction, many great auctions were held in this building. Some stuff today that would, uh, material today that would easily make it into a major sale in New York went through that BFW hall. And uh, old dealers will tell you about it. And, and we had auctions there um, uh, ourselves where, where some, you know, Iris Spainerman from New York bid on them, um, Alexander Acevedo, Israel Sack, uh, Pook and Pook, you name it. They all, they all came there. All the major uh, Ameri American uh, art dealers and antique dealers showed up there. It was absolutely amazing. Um, uh, Flying Crane Antiques, Cliff Schaefer, um, they would all come there. They all loved it. It was, it was old school auctioning. It was a lot of fun. And this little painting appeared there. It was in the late 1980s. It's a late Ming Dynasty painting. And uh, it had on the back of it some interesting information. It had been loaned to the Fogg Art Museum on several occasions back in the 1920s in this family. They had the stickers and labels and all the information on there. And it had this old backboard, cardboard backboard that was rotting. I had, I had the frame squared away because the frame was literally falling apart. And after I bought it, I called the Fogg and they very nicely, they're very nice there, um, were able to look up the numbers of the painting and tell me quite a bit about it when it was loaned and, and, and uh, that sort of thing and uh, who it came from. Because the Fogg Museum, um, as many of you know, has an absolutely outstanding Asian art collection. Um, many, much of it uh, was, uh, much of it provided to them by uh, uh, former students and families of students, uh, old New England families, the Agassiz family, the Lorings, the, the Cabots, the Lodges, the Saltonstalls, all those old Boston names, the Morses, um, and they gave things to the museum. That was just what they did back then. But Ernst Fanalosa, uh, it, it's pretty much an endless list. But at any rate, and uh, th this painting came from one of those families, and I was able to buy it on a single bid of $100 back then. Uh, nobody wanted it, nobody knew what it was. He, I, I believe the auctioneer put it up as a Japanese print. 
because uh, he, he didn't know, and uh, 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 it, it's not as clearly Chinese, and it's a picture of a scholar sitting on his on his daybed out in the garden, uh, 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 sort of relaxing, appreciating in nature art. Here is a servant bringing him some tea on a red lacquer tray, and over here you have another servant um, uh, keeping the fire going here in brewing tea for him and, and, and tending to him. And uh, to, 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 they make a day of this. This was sort of an afternoon activity. And you'll notice here he has a very nice little Yixing teapot and another cup here. And then some scholars, some books over here, maybe jade books or, or paper books. And then uh, some bronzes and vases. Here's another little bronze over here. And then over here on the table, they brought out more things for him to look at and to, and to appreciate in nature. Um, uh, a number of, there's a little, looks like an incense burner, a goo form vase here. Um, another uh, covered jar, jar with big piece of coral coming out of it. Just a very interesting sea, all all uh, done under the under the shadows of this big wutong tree, um, which which often appear in Chinese paintings. But uh, the way his robes are done were just wonderful, and he's sitting on this this uh, day bed that they've set up for him outdoors to relax on, um, with inset um, um, uh, 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 white marble panels. And uh, here are his shoes on the ground. And it's just an absolutely charming scene. And um, it went up. The auctioneer had nobody interested. He said, how about $100? I said, absolutely. And I bought it. And, um, and, and that was it. And it's been with me ever since. And this is the kind of thing I really, really uh, adore. And uh, it measures about 20 or so inches long and about 10 inches, 12 inches tall. The frame is, I had the frame made for it uh, because the frame that was on it was just completely dilapidated and, um, um, and, and rather dangerous to the work of art itself. It was digging into the upper corner here on the right and I just said, just get it off, we'll put a new frame on it, which is always a good idea. And uh, not expensive, this is a very modest frame, but it works perfectly and it looks nice. So anyway, that's just another one of the things that we have around here, the kind of things that I like personally. And um, uh, it's, it's very happily uh, hanging under a light in a, a little uh, alcove uh, off our living room. Anyway, and that's, that's what that is. All right. I thought I'd share it. I thought you might be interested. All right. Now on to other stuff that happened this week. One of the things I wanted to mention was um, we added, we, we were able to get the uh, <clears throat> working with our so some software people, get the software installed on the computers here at the house for, for turning out the catalogs instead of having to have somebody go down to the office and turn them out and up, post them and do all that. We can do it now here. And um, I posted a bunch of catalogs this week. Um, and, and, and we did some at the end of last week, but this week mostly. And uh, one of them is something very interesting that uh, Ben Farina at, at, at Freeman Gallery mentioned to me a few weeks ago. And I'd heard of this. I'd seen I wasn't sure. And he said, yeah, it's this book about fakes and the history of fakes and what makes a fake versus, versus a reproduction and how long have they been making fakes. About, this is all about porcelain. And this is a terrific, uh, this was originally done, I guess, in, Fran in French and then was um, translated. True or false, defining the fake in Chinese porcelain. And it's fairly long. It's 16 pages long, and uh, it's pretty well illustrated, and it goes through um, the different motivations behind making fakes, when they made them. Was it a tribute piece made in the 18th century to the Song Dynasty, or was it an outright fake meant to deceive? And then, of course, modern fakes and all that stuff. But if you, if you, if you want to read it and you collect porcelain, you think it might sound interesting, it'll be in the bookcase section, in the reference section, over on bit amount and you all know how to get there scroll down the home page to the red box catalogs and books and it's right there okay and uh it's it's rather it's it's an interesting read it really is it's well written it was written a couple of years ago it's very nice um the other thing i posted was this uh those of you that are into rugs and central asian rugs in particular is this this folder i i was able to get this this is turkman rugs in the victorian albert museum if you're interested in very early uh, Central Asian carpets and, and so forth. This is a, a very nice uh, uh, a book that was written. Uh, uh, the technical analysis was done by Leslie Piner, and it was written by Robert Piner and Michael Francis, two of the most knowledgeable rug guys that have ever lived. And they go through the Turkoman collection at the museum. Uh, it's a little slow loading here today. We don't have great Wi-Fi right now at the house. They're doing some work. <laughs> At any rate, uh, that's, in, that's been added to the bookcase section for the rug, rug guys among you. And we also added this, this, these, Christie was a little behind getting some of the catalogs out. This is for the Song de Tang collection of Sung Dynasty ceramics. It's being auctioned in Hong Kong tomorrow. It's a very nice catalog. 
It's all Sung Ceramics. If you're a Sung Ceramic buyer, and I know a number of you are, uh, and if you haven't seen this catalog, check it out. It'll be on the, uh, we're going to, of course, leave it on the reference section of the site uh, for future reference because it's specialized. And there's a number of good specialized auctions um, uh, coming around. Uh, uh, Bonhams has one on Cloisonne, this one on Sung Wares. Um, so you, you want to keep an eye on that. And this is the, um, the, the Cheng Wei Hua collection of archaic jades being held at Christie's also on the 3rd, which is uh, tomorrow, Friday. And uh, of course, you can re review that anytime you want until, you know, into the future. You want to come back and look up some jades. Um, you can see some authentic pieces that are very, very nice. And then last is this, important Chinese um, uh, uh, ceramics and works of art. And uh, had I been a little more squared away here, I would have done a preview of this auction. This is a great auction, and there's some great things in there. I'm going to do a post-auction video of it when it's over. The, the, the sale is, uh, I believe, uh, tomorrow also. But uh, some exceptional pieces in this auction. Do check it out. Really, really, really do check it out. Uh, there's some uh, great uh, early pieces of porcelain. There's a, uh, a, a, a very, very rare uh, uh, Yung Lo um, um, Yu Chu Ping. I think, I'm pretty sure it was Yung Lo. I just glanced at it quickly. It looked amazing. Um, and, and, and things like this from the Chow Collection. This absolutely amazing uh, tub. Um, it's lot 2911. I think it's auction on uh, estimate on request. Uh, uh, let's see here. What is it? It's estimated at 390 to, to 650,000. And um, I, 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 I uh, think it's uh, a similar one in the Chow collection. Did this come from the Lu collection 2005, Hong Kong University? Um, yeah, Edward Chow. It came from the collection of Edward Chow originally. There it is. And uh, an absolute rarity, absolutely great rarity. And I wouldn't be surprised if it went through its estimate. But at any rate, there's a whole bunch of great material in this auction. And, and if, if you're a porcelain uh, fan and you like rare porcelain, you want to check this out. There's some pretty great examples in here. Here's that, uh, that vase I, meant, I mentioned uh, earlier, the Young Low vase. There it is. Yeah, Young Low. Absolutely great. And... Um, there's a, there's a whole lot of write-up on it in here by Rosemary Scott. So you get some real good scholarship along with the lot. And uh, as they always do, it's, 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 you know, she, she, she's such a good writer. If you don't have any of her books, get them. They're worth reading. And um, um, she, she's a consultant uh, uh, for the auction house. At any rate, there it is. Okay, now <clears throat> let's see here. Um, what happened this week on, on uh, eBay from that over to this? Oh, one of the things I wanted to mention was at the bottom of the newsletter page, we've decided because a lot of people write and they say, well, what's in the, um, uh, what's in the, uh, what typically is on the new, you know, in the, in the global member pages. So we've gotten a bunch of people to subscribe lately, but some people have been asking. So what we've done is at the bottom of the weekly newsletter page each week, we're going to include just a handful of, just a few things, like 1% like or less of the things that are on the global member pages. That you, these are the things that we pick out each week the way we do with the newsletter page and put on here. Okay, and here's the, some stuff from the Rob Michael sale. We've got some stuff here from the bottom sale. There's a couple of good sales over, you know, over in, in the EU right, coming up right now. And just a, just a handful to give folks a sense of what's on there. And these are all things we've looked at and information about subscribing if you want. It's, it's, it's cheap. It's a buck a week. And um, um, we, we had some issues uh, getting the stuff to load. And we had to get a hold of live auctioneers and things. And they were very cooperative and helped us out with it. They, they made some technical changes on their site, and it's back to normal. And there's a bunch of things we've added this week for, for some sales coming up over at Bonhams and other places on the global on the member pages as well. All right, so just just so you know about that, um, a couple of things to keep in mind. Um, Rob Michael's sale is starting tomorrow. Uh, we did a video on it a couple of weeks ago. It looks very 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 nice. There's some uh, he's got some good premium lots. Uh, it's a it's a two day sale tomorrow and Saturday. And uh, if you haven't previewed it yet, by all means, get over there and preview it. There's some good-looking lots coming up, and uh, it, sh it should be a, a very good auction for them. There's a few Japanese pieces as well, early Kekiemon-style pieces, some early Arita, and so on and so forth. This is all in Rob Michael's sale. This is only part of it. It's an enormous sale, and uh, do check it out. Okay. Now, uh, what happened on eBay last week? Well, a lot of things. Some interesting things happened, actually. One of the things I wanted to mention was um, this, uh, this wonderful pewter uh, 
Foo Lion that sold a couple of weeks ago in some deadbeat, I'm just going to say it, some deadbeat didn't pay his bill. And uh, the fellow had to repost it. The last time around, it sold for $804. And I thought that was a cheap, I thought that was, an, I thought that was a very good buy, bargain. And uh, he, this guy bit the bullet, took the, took the chance of relisting it again in fairly short order. And this time it sold for $1,158, almost $400 more than it brought the first time. So I hope that's a lesson to, to the gamers out there that think that they can buy things, not pay for them, force the seller to relist them, hoping they'll go for a lower price because the second time through the cow, so to speak, doesn't always work out as well. And there seems to be a trend where it's, it's, it's sort of backfiring. And I've got a few cases of it this week. This is one of them, and I'm really delighted this this brought more money. This is a very nice piece of pewter, and I didn't I did when it sold for 800. I thought it was a great deal, and I still think it's a good deal at 1150 bucks. This is a great little piece of pewter, absolutely wonderful. And uh, the other thing that happened was uh, I'll get to it in a minute. Um, uh, let's see, this, we had this this come up metallic uh, thread uh, uh, civilian rank badge uh, went up, and, and 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 it was interesting. This this had a I think a very friendly price at the end of the day. Ended up selling for three hundred and fifteen dollars. In the past, we've seen these um, these seventh rank bags uh, bring. Um, uh, you know, five to seven hundred dollars in this style. This is a clearly a first, probably first half of the 19th century badge. Nicely done and uh, ended up going for three hundred and fifteen dollars. So whoever, if one of you got it, you got a good buy. That's a nice rank badge for that, for that price. Very, very attractive price. And uh, then there were these. And we remember these. We talked about them. These had been posted uh, about a month ago. The guy put them up. I, I loved them. These nodding head figures. They're about 15 inches tall each. And the stands were being listed separately. And uh, they both, all of them sold a month ago. And uh, the, the nodding figures ended up going for around uh, $2,000, $2,200, which I thought was extremely reasonable. And for some reason, the buyer didn't pay his bill. I don't get it. And uh, the, 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 the and and the sell and the stand sold I think for around twenty four hundred dollars back then twenty two thousand and change, and I thought well yeah you and I felt bad for the guy well and and the guy the guy emailed me because uh, he was you know we we shared them with everybody and I, I wrote it back I said yeah I'm really sorry those should get paid for those are nice, and uh, he agreed of course and uh, he put it back up, and look at this the second time around look what they brought four thousand and eleven dollars. They actually, the price went up. It went up uh, about seventeen hundred, eighteen hundred dollars over what they brought the first time, and the stands resold quite well. Also, I think they brought uh, maybe a couple of hundred bucks under what they brought the first time, but overall for the two lots, he did fine with them, and I'm, I'm very glad to see that. Those are nice nodding figures, and anybody that could have had those for two thousand dollars that didn't pay for them is out of their mind, absolutely out of their mind. They were fools. Uh, because I think I said at the time, I wouldn't have been surprised if they brought three to 5000 pretty comfortably. And I thought 2000 was a very reasonable buy, extremely reasonable. So good on him for, for doing that. Um, good courage to put those up again. All right, and now over to this, the, uh, the, 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 the uh, Jai Jing. Uh, is this Jai Jing, right? Uh, yeah, the Jai Jing um, uh, blue and white pot. Few people didn't think it was Jai Jing. I think it absolutely is. Um, the, the texture of this foot rim, that paste, and the texture of this glaze, the way this looks here, up in here, all of this looks absolutely fine to me. I know you put folks, I think there's a little debate about it, but um, to me, I thought it was absolutely fine. It's a Jai Beijing pot, and I thought it would bring, you know, uh, three to five thousand, four to six thousand, somewhere there. Ended up selling for 5,200, which is about right. Uh, this was a, a nice looking pot, uh, uh, a nice condition, and uh, I think it was absolutely fine. All right, now um, let's see here. This this was a great little buy. Another another little teapot. Um, this is a, a late 18th century teapot, Shin Lung period. Had a couple of uh, issues. I think it had a hairline in the glaze under the lid or something like that. Yeah, right here, as I recall, that sort of thing. But it, somebody got a great buy. 162 dollars from a seller over in the UK. Um, um, and the shipping from the UK to here was only what 32 pounds. Not bad. 40 bucks, which is about right. All right, so that was a that was a nice uh, a nice uh, a nice nice purchase. If you if you're buying 18th century porcelain, you don't have an endless wallet. Um, this is a good thing to buy. All right, and then over here to this uh, mid 19th century um, uh, 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 teapot, um, nice example with that high dome lid on it. Very stylish, beautifully done, and. Uh, 
it didn't come with the cup, I don't believe. But at any rate, nicely done, decorated handle. And uh, let's see, it ended up selling for $332, which I think is a perfectly reasonable buy. This was Amigalari um, over in, uh, in, uh, in London had this. Uh, but a nice, nice little Chinese export uh, teapot. Very attractive. All right. And then this, another, uh, this is a Kangxi bowl um, that had a, a, a Ming Jiajing mark on the bottom. But uh, nice looking, nice looking bowl. Um, he, he didn't really have a side shot of it. I would have liked to have seen it standing on its base uh, so I get a better idea of the shape. Uh, you can see it pretty well, but not as well as you'd want to, I think. At any rate, it sort of flares out. It's one of those flared out rim bowls, but uh, looked pretty good to me. And uh, ended up selling for $1,291. All right, this was a year round, had it. A couple of people speculated that it might be um, a Chin Lung period. I don't think so. That looks more like Kang Shi blue and white to me with the Fu line. But uh, anyway, any rate, nice 18th century, probably Kang Shi bowl and uh, $1,291, good decoration. All right, and then there was over to this. This was that TC panel that only had a, a day or two to go. And it was up to, it was, we put it in the newsletter last week, it was only up to about, I think, 12 or 15 bucks or something. This was a nice, nice TC. Uh, nice looking, good colors, um, a nice pink in it, nice gold thread, all that good stuff. And uh, at the end, it jumped. It went up and it did just fine. It sold on the 27th, yeah, so about five days ago. Uh, $425, which is right in, right in the range, right in the range. And uh, when you see these, sometimes always look, if you're ever at an auction or someplace and you see one of these, check around pretty carefully and see if there aren't three or four. Uh, because they, they were often done in sets of four, sets of six. And um, in the States with textiles and all that sort of thing, they often get split up. Um, we, we've found great KC panels in the bo bottoms of trunks of um, uh, American linens uh, because they just get mixed around. So always check around, especially at sort of a jumble auction, to make sure if you find one of these, make sure there isn't more of it. And if you find more of it, ask the auctioneer if you can put them up together. All right, and then over to this, this very nice, if you hear a bark, it's my, my dog, April. What is it, April? What? Oh. <laughs> yes, April. Yes. I think she just woke up from her nap. All right. Now, on to this, the, uh, the carved uh, crystal uh, uh, water pot. This is a nice one. It's peach form, um, 19th century, good detail, nicely carved underneath. We looked at it last week. Here's that nice peach shape on it. And uh, in the end, it did well. But Scholar's Objects continue to do well. <clears throat> it brought $547. I think this was a dandy addition. If you collect scholar's objects, if you collect brush rests and armrests and brush pots and, and ink stones and all this, this was a nice addition if you bought this. This is a good looking piece. I liked it a lot. All right. And then over here, the Dragon Roundel. The, the seller had two of them. This one was the better of the two. Um, and nice colors, 19th century, late 18th, early 19th century. Um, a nice gold thread on it. Looked to be in pretty good condition with a minor bit of pulling here and here, but uh, a little bit here and there. It needs a little tidying up, but the colors were good, and it was uh, quite robust, the facial expression. Uh, very 18th century, the, the way the, way the, the, the dragon's uh, head is done. Here's the flaming pearl but, um, within his coil, and uh, ended up selling for $1,515. And this was offered by Handy's Antiques um, um, in, in Staten Island, New York. They, they get some good things. They sell on eBay fairly, well, I think, all the time. All right, and then over here to this. This, is a, this, is a, this was a nice little lot for people who are just sort of getting their feet wet in the Chinese porcelain world and want to get some uh, reasonable things to s sort of study and learn from and enjoy. It was this nice pair, uh, not a pair, but two Canton um, uh, uh, tea caddies. These are fairly small, five or six inches. These weren't big ones um, um, and, and slightly different, uh, about the same age. Uh, with little wooden lids on them and so forth. But these are, you know, clearly late 18th, early 19th century jars. And somebody bought the pair for um, uh, $65. That's a pretty good deal. This was from Decor Arts in, in Cheshire, Connecticut. And they had another couple of jars, too, that I think went for $80 that were, I think, a matched pair, um, about the same size. So um, uh, these are good buy. That's a good buy. Um, um, these, these, these kind of jars were selling for $150 and $200 20 years ago. So these are very good buys these days. And then lastly is this, is the uh, late 19th century Famille Rose Moon Flask. 
Um, this is a, a rather nice one. It's got this turquoise ground with a, a, a black uh, a enameling uh, reminisce, is often associated with colors tied to the Empress Dowager. There's, there's some of one of her colors and patterns and so forth with the dragons on it. Um, here's a picture of the base, a little bit uh, rough the way they did them. The, uh, the, the paste tends to be a little, little, a little scratchy on there, but uh, this is a nice authentic looking thing. Here it is, is the bottom of it. And it did pretty well. These always do well. There's always a market for moon flasks. And this one sold for $751. And the value is usually tied to its size. I don't know, did you include the height in here? Uh, usually the, oh yeah, 12 inches. Um, these can be found as big as 20 inches tall. This was a, a regular, sort of a more typical size, 12 inches, 10 to 12 inches. They made them 13 inches. But occasionally you'll come across some that, were, were, that are 18, 20, 22 inches high. Uh, a few years ago, we had a pair of these that were, I think they were uh, 22 or 23 inches, and, and they did very well. They brought around $5,000, but they were very big. They came out of a house down in uh, uh, Newport, Rhode Island, actually. Um, a, a, good, a good little sale down there. Used to be some good auctions in Newport. Woo! And uh, <laughs> very nice. A lot of things from the Green Collection came from there. He was a politician down there, and um, he, he was a big Asian art collector. He's very tight with the Newport crowd, and they used to sell him things out of their collections all the time. There's the there's an airport named after him, the CEL Green Airport in Rhode Island. But at any rate, um, uh, you get things from his collection periodically when you attend sales down there. Their provenance back to him. All right, now what's coming up? There's a few things coming up this week. Um, I haven't I haven't gone through and done all of the uh, searching. One of the things I wanted to mention was I talked a bit last week about this wonderful China trade uh, trunk. Um, a very, very nice 19th century uh, 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 painted uh, tr trunk that had been um, sold by the uh, Davenport Company in Boston, in New York. They were a major decorator, designer firm, top-notch stuff. And uh, somebody got dropped a bid on it, $950. The guy doesn't provide shipping. He's in Beckett, Mass., which is sort of central western Mass. Uh, but uh, so somebody dropped a bid on it. I mean, he may get it for that, and that's a steal because that's about an $1,800 trunk. All right, so we'll see what happens there next week. That closes in a couple of days. And then this, if you're a Kutani buyer and you like nice Meiji period Kutani and you like unusual shapes and forms, this is an unusual one. And it's only up to $3 and it closes Sunday. If you're a Kutani buyer, check this out. It's a double, double spout, um, uh, very elegantly done, about 10 or 12 inches tall, looks to be in good condition, signed on the bottom, Meiji period. Um, a, a, a nice piece of Katani if you're, if you're a Katani buyer. This is quite nicely done. All right. And, uh, uh, you know, you, should, you can pick this up for under $100. You're doing great. And uh, what else is going on here? This Famille Rose uh, charger is coming up. This is a uh, pretty good size, as I recall, wasn't it? 11 inches. It's just hair under a charger, but it's, it's not a little dish. It's not a saucer. With a dragon festival with all the boys in it. There it is. It's a well known pattern. You've seen them before, and they made them in these plates and ranging in size from six or seven inches all the way up to 17 or 18 inches. It's up to $575. I suspect it'll go another three or 400 before it closes out. And then this this is something I, I, I spotted. This is a seller down in Rhode Island. They get good things, they handle estates. This is, and many of you know who they are, Woolwist. Okay. They're very reputable, nice people. And they put this up and they listed it as Chinese bronze. Okay, this is not Chinese bronze. This is Japanese. And this is Japanese Art Nouveau bronze. And Japanese Art Nouveau bronze is pretty rare and fairly valuable stuff. All right, and it's been listed as Chinese. And uh, if you collect Japanese bronzes, you know what I'm talking about. Go Google Art Nouveau bronzes and see what dealers are asking for these pieces. Lots of money, thousands. And uh, here's a very nice one. It's good size. It's, uh, how big is this thing? Um, I think it was like like 12 or 14 inches in height. Hold on, I want to get down to the measurements here to get it right. Oh, for heaven's sake, he's got lots of pictures. Let's, uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, I should play, the, uh, play some music here while I look this thing up. As I recall, it was, um, there it is, 13 inches tall. Yeah, it is, it's over a foot tall. But this is Japanese Art Nouveau Meiji period stamped and marked on the bottom. 
And right now it's up to only a couple of hundred dollars, $212. You got four days to go, closes Monday. If you're a Japanese bronze buyer, you got to check this out. It will be in the newsletter this week. And uh, he also has a uh, very fine, the same seller. He also, I don't know, I'm usually they're pretty good on that. I think they maybe had somebody new helping them catalog stuff. Um, is a very nice pith painting of an interior scene in a Chinese frame. And they listed that for some reason as Japanese. I, I don't know why. And uh, I, I, I did email them and say, eh, this is, Chinese and that's Japanese, but anyway, they, they're, they're going to let it run. Um, so, so check those two things out. Very, very nice. And also, there's this this Blanc de Chine de Wa uh, barrel form uh, covered jar with these rebuses running around the side, lion mask handles. Um, looks like an old one. The bottom of it looks pretty good. Uh, the bottom of the lid looks pretty good. Here's the bottom of the jar. Um, looks early 19th century, maybe 18th century, but a nice piece of Blanc de Chine. It's got six days to go. Closes Wednesday. It's only up to $11. And it should bring more than that. It is, what, about six inches tall? Yeah, 15 centimeters, 14 centimeters tall. So it's about five and three quarter inches tall, which is the right size for these. That's typically what they are. Okay, and uh, that's about it for the for the week. Um, um, we updated the uh, global member pages a couple of times this week, added a whole bunch of stuff, got that all squared away and back in good shape. And um, there's a lot going on around here. And um, um, I'll be back in touch with everybody next week when we, we get through. The well, my dog is about to bark, I think. She's getting a little upset. What, April? What? What? Oh. Anyway, if, if you enjoy the video, subscribe and uh, uh, leave a comment. Tell me what you think, what, um, uh, that kind of thing. And join us over at Bitamount, Bitamount Live. Look around. Um, there are links off the newsletter page. If you haven't got signed up for the newsletter page yet, just go there to Bitamount, go to the newsletter, and you sign up for free and get notified when the uh, uh, pages are updated uh, each week. All righty, and I'm going to try and get it updated uh, later today or get the information ready to load tomorrow. So it's all updated for Friday. We're doing, we're doing the best we can. All right. Have a wonderful weekend. Uh, it's actually 50, 55 degrees here today. Uh, right now it's 55 and sunny, which is amazing for this time of the year on the coast but, uh, of Cape Ann. So uh, we're taking it. All right. Thanks for watching and uh, see you all next time. Bye-bye.